and welcome to Roadmap 2019, where our attention is on the major stakeholders in Nigeria's journey to the 2019 elections. I am Ladi Akiri Duluale. Thanks for being with us. On this week's edition of the program, my guest has been kidnapped by herdsmen from his farm, but released after four days. He's a strong advocate of restructuring and believes Nigeria's viable future lies in this direction. He denies any link to corruption, especially in the run-up to the 2015 elections, and agrees that only a coalition can unseat the current APC government in much the same way the APC unseated the PDP in 2015. Now please join us as we speak to the former Secretary to the Government of the Federation and Finance Minister of Nigeria, but now the National Chairman of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, Chief Oluyemisi Falai. Chief, thank you so much for agreeing to speak with us. Welcome to Roadmap 2019. Thank you for asking me to give this interview. Uh, a little while back, you were in uh, Oka, uh, the, uh, in Anambra State, for a summit that had a little bit to do with restructuring. And from what one can take uh, from the media reports, there were certain provisions, uh, six-year presidency, the number of vice presidents, rotation, a brand new constitution, and so on and so forth. Uh, do you think it is possible or feasible to do all that between now and the elections next year? Well, um, the presentation at Oka was by Ndigbo. That was the Ndigbo version of what a reconstituted, restructured Nigeria should look like. Uh, as we go from zone to zone, there are slight variations, but the core issues are the same. But as to whether the items read out at OCA are feasible between now and the next election, uh, it's hard to tell because, you see, man is infinitely capable of adjusting his timetable and redoubling his efforts to achieve his objectives. It is a question of whether we as a nation make up our minds to do those things. If we do, yes, we can. Um, in the immediate aftermath of that event, there was, I don't know whether one can call it a response from the North, uh, the Coalition of Northern Groups. Uh, if you recollect, they were the ones who, a little while in the past, gave an ultimatum that some people should leave the North. But that was eventually uh, resolved. Now, their own position, the way I understand it, is that, yes, restructuring, not a bad idea but that it must be specific enough to identify what the interests of the various groups are within, uh, within whatever it is that is eventually agreed. But that then brings me to the issue of, it seems as if different people are saying different things. So it's not quite clear what exactly the definition of this restructuring thing is. I, I, I'm sorry, it is absolutely clear what it is. What is Look, it? We spent four, five months in Abuja in 2014. When I say we, I mean almost 500 Nigerians, adults, young people, civilians, military people, traditional rulers, people from all walks of life, spelling out what restructuring should mean. And the spelling out took the form of over 600 resolutions that were passed by all of us by consensus. Those resolutions covered the, show, the type of government, uh, the tenure, the how to rotation. For example, what, what is going on in Nigeria now is called rotation of the presidency. As far as we were concerned, uh, what is going on is not fair rotation. For example, we have had five presidents, elected presidents in Nigeria so far. Three of the five are from the Northwestern zone alone. So, if rotation is for fairness, surely that's not fair. But what we agreed at the national conference was that the presidency should alternate between north and south and rotate within each of the regions. In other words, if what we agreed in 2014 was what we are practicing now, if the presidency leaves the northwest uh, and comes to the south, 
the next time it's going to the north, it will go to another zone in the north. Not the same zone again and again. So because that, if it does that, then it's not addressing the basic issue of fairness. So that's what I mean by saying that the content of restructuring was clearly spelled out in those 600 plus resolutions, which were all passed by consensus. I mean, nobody felt strongly enough about any issue to press for a division, even though a ballot box was always before us. All it took was for someone to raise his hand, and the chairman would have obliged him by asking for a division. It never happened. So the structuring has been spared out. And nobody was forced or induced to agree with those resolutions. I'm not saying all of them are implementable today, but it contains the core and essence of what we call restructuring. What is restructuring? Restructuring is those changes we have to make to go back to the essence of the political covenant we had at independence, with which every part was happy. So we are saying, let's go back to that we all agreed before. We took care of the interests of various parts of Nigeria. That basic, to me, that is what it means. Well, it seems as if politics has been introduced into it, or maybe what I referred to earlier on as the not too, even though you've now said it's basically clear what it is. Yes. I remember that in the immediate aftermath of President Buhari's emergence as president and his swearing in, this whole issue of the 2014 National Conference report yes. was brought up. Yes. And his response was more or less to the effect that he's going to have nothing to do with it. Well, of course, subsequently, his party had set up a committee <laughs> which also looked at it and more or less came out with... And took a lot of the resolutions from so, 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 Look, brother, the truth of the matter, we are overplaying politics. You see, at my stage in life, uh, by the grace of God, I'll be 80 very soon. And I've been in public service all my life. I, do, I think we should stop toying with the destiny of Nigeria. I think most Nigerians know, they must know, that things are not right the way they are. That we need to go back to that which served us well in the past. The independence constitution served every part well. That constitution was approved by the Sadana of Sokoto, by Obafemi Awolowo, Dr. Namda Zikwe, and other colleagues. And the various regions did very well. And there was relative peace. So that is what have, has been, have been lost since the military gave us this contraption. I was saying something we have used for 50 years that has not served us well. So let's try something else. And that something else should not be a new thing, but think that's something that we, all of us used to have and love and accept. Let's find our way back to that new equilibrium. That's what we are saying. And I can tell you, you see, in the National Conference, most people were grandstanding. People were making speeches, not for the benefit of those of us in the hall, but for those outside. Watch but it. in the nights, we usually had heart-to-heart -heart discussions in what we call the bridge. That was where people spoke their minds. For example, I tell you, give you an example. A friend from the North vehemently opposed parliamentary form of government. So in the night, I said, why did you oppose parliamentary form of government? Oh, he said it is best form of government. It's cheaper. It's more collegiate. In a heterogeneous, multilingual, multicultural society, parliamentary government forces whoever is head of government, to continuously consult and carry his colleagues along, makes for stability and peace. Said, then why did you oppose it? He said, Obasanjo has used this powerful presidential system twice for two terms. They too must use the same twice before we go back to that which we all agree is the best for Nigeria. Now that's what I mean by playing politics with the future of our country. I think restructuring is a big word. We can drop that word and say, let's go back to the, the type of constitution we had at independence. Of course, there have been modifications to reflect the changes since then. But the essence of it, the core and essence of autonomy for the various federated units so that they could exercise initiative and develop the areas as they did before and immediately after independence. That's what we're talking about. 
at that time, every region had its own representative in London. The Nigerian representative was called the High Commissioner. It was Chief M.T. Umbu. The Western region had his own agent general, they called him, so to, af to avoid confusion with Between, the, yeah. yes, they called agent general. It was Mr. Chief Omolodun. For the North, it was Haji Abdul Malik. For the East, it was Hachara. So we had four diplomatic representatives in London. That was the kind of Nigeria we had. And each one took care of the specific and peculiar interests of its region. For example, the West, they had a lot of students in, uh, abroad. The work of the agent general was substantially about the welfare of the students. Uh, in the East, whatever it was, was the core of the business. So it was a good thing for everybody. And not just that, every region had its own coat of arms and Amori Abiyanis. Each region had a police force. Surely in the West there was a police force to supplement the Nigerian police force. So these, were, these are the things we are talking about. People are now talking about them as if these are new things that have been invented in the name of restructuring. No. In Akure, where, 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 where I was living as a child, we had Akure Native Authority Police. We had three police forces, not one. Nigerian Police Force, Western Nigerian Police Force, and Akure Native Authority Police. We had our Native Authority, Ibano Native Authority, and so on. So that various types of crimes were managed by different levels of policing. So this is what we mean by restructuring. Let's go back to that that served us well. The process of going back is what we call restructuring.